everyone, this is Ian Miller from Tour with Comics YouTube channel. Welcome. Tonight we have a very special guest with us right now. Um, uh, I, I met him over the past year. Really cool dude. And just, you know, finished launching the Kickstarter for his comic, Zyber uh, Ronin. Please welcome Daniel Garcia. Welcome. Hey, thanks for, hey, man, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Not at all, not at all. I, I, I was just taking some notes here backstage so I can make sure that I got everyone necessary during our conversation. <laughs> okay, so um, Cyber Ruin, let's talk about it. Uh, what's it about? So, Ian, um, we, we, we launched the Kickstarter towards the end of the year last year, um, and... I kind of let me get into, into, into the production piece of it just so everyone understands uh, where we are with everything. Um, the, the book did pretty well on the Kickstarter. Um, it, it, I actually had to put some of the money up myself in order to get the book printed and get everything done. Yeah. Um, and, and we, we printed out uh, one, of the, uh, one of the covers, which isn't the main cover actually, but we printed it first, which is an alternate cover. Uh, and then uh, Fox from Fox Footcrafts, who's been helping me put everything together, said to me, hey, I think you printed the wrong cover. And I said, <laughs> oh, great. So we had to go back and actually reprint the right cover, which I just got today or yesterday, I should say. Oh. Um, yeah, so, so we got the actual cover, the number one uh, for, our, for our Kickstarter backers. Um, and, um, um, and, and now I'll be able to start shipping some of this stuff out but it's 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 been a long drawn out process uh longer than i had anticipated and i had hoped but you know finally i think we're we're, we're on the right track um and in terms of the story um i guess in order for you to understand like what the story's about let me tell you a little bit of how it came to be if that's okay go ahead go ahead <laughs> okay great um so um big fan of the 80s comics right yeah. and and some of the 90s but a lot of the 80s comics uh, big fan of the turtles, big fan of the original X Men. Yeah, of course, right. So, like all the staples that classic. <laughs> the classic stuff. Yeah, um, and then I was also a really big fan of anthropomorphic stuff before it became popular in the eighties. So it was like uh, Captain Carrot and the Zoo Crew, right? Uh -huh. So um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. It's I, it's a, it's it's another level of nerdum. But all right, cool. <laughs> Um, so those were just some of the things that I was a big fan of when I was growing up. And then I was also, my whole life I've been in the martial arts. Um, and so I, I was like, how do I put all this together and not make like your, 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 your typical superhero book. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, okay, well, uh, cybernetics are cool, right? Robots are pretty cool. Uh, and then I was like, oh, well, um, I, I can't do a turtle because obviously I, I don't want to get sued. Right. But, um, <laughs> so I was like, Oh, you know, the first thing that came to mind was a rabbit and I, I don't know why, but, uh, I started to expand on the idea of a rabbit that lived not in our galaxy, right. In another galaxy, um, on a planet who was a warrior. Right. So hence the Ronin name behind it. Um, and on his planet or from where he's from, um, he was uh, this like great warrior that, and, and the, the the society models itself after a the Japanese society, right? So being into martial arts my whole life, really big into like Eastern philosophy and all that stuff. Um, I was like, okay, well, samurais, right? So like, um, uh, also a big fan of Usagi Yojimbo, which because it, it goes hand in hand with the turtles. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, how do I make it different than Usagi and different from the turtles? So I was like, oh, okay, cool. We'll combine it and make him like a cybernetic rabbit, right? So then, but how does he become a cybernetic rabbit? So I was like, okay, well, then I started thinking more. I'm like, well, what if his planet's invaded by this uh, powerful opposing galactic army? They kidnap him, right? Um, and then they kind of experiment on him. And then he escapes and then he makes his way to Earth. So then while he's here on Earth and the first issue, when you're reading it, he references a lot of things that are, um that are like well you know now that i'm on earth and i'm in new york city i'll kind of take it on as my own new homeland and my new home uh and i'll protect the people and the citizens of new york kind of yeah. thing so um and then you'll see that as as i'm hoping as the book progresses you'll see that this 
invading army finds out where he is and they come to earth and then dispatch some bounty hunters in the, in the next issue. Um, and then um, uh, that's kind of where that, that all uh, unfolds. Okay. So, and then when you and I were talking, you know, last year sometime, um, uh, we were, we were discussing doing like a branch off version of Cyber Ronin with our own story. I know you and I had kind of discussed that. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, so, you know, just uh, there's a ton of possibilities with all those things, which is the great thing about drawing or, or writing comics, I should say, um, is that you can do anything at any time, right? As long as you have the capital for it. It's, yeah, exactly. it's, it's, <laughs> as long as the capital is there, you can do it, so. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I've met a lot of great folks uh, when I first started this out. Um, I've met a lot of amazing people um, uh, who have been just fantastic with, you know, willing to help out and um, and have their own ideas, people such as yourself and people that have wanted to write and work with me and work, collaborate together on things. Um, but I think that from all that, you you know, we, I, I've, I've expanded on the universe um, and that I've met some great folks along the way that are like, hey, why don't we do stuff together? Um, and yeah, that, that's where we are right now. So, yeah. That, that, that's really exciting. Um, let me ask you this, though. Um, is this an ongoing series or do you have a certain point where you want it to end? Okay, so this is an ongoing series. Yeah, so, you know, I was talking to um, uh, one of my, the folks that I was telling you about who um, you, you, you kind of meet online and then you develop relationships with, like the ones that are worth developing relationships with. Exactly. Um, is, uh, is Kevin Clady from The Zone, from The Zone Collectibles in Tifton, Georgia. Oh. Um, who's just been, yeah, he's been an amazing, if, if you don't have him on your, on, on your Facebook, um, as a friend, I would suggest he's a great, great human being. Him and his family are fantastic. Um, so him and I were talking, he's like, Oh, what do you, you know, what do you want to do? Um, what do you want to do with, uh, with the story? And I said, you know, I, I don't, I don't really have an idea of where I want to end. I just kind of want to keep putting things out. And, um, one of the things he suggested was look, do number one get number one out there as much as possible. Um, even if it takes a year or two to just keep making sure everyone knows what the book is about and just keep yeah. shopping it around. And then eventually, you know, you do a second Kickstarter for one and two. Um, but you know, I think that's a great idea because either you, it, it, I, I compare the comic industry to, um, to the music industry. And, and I, I have relatives that have been in the music industry for a while. And, um, and they're actually producers, they're music producers. Okay. And, and uh, one of the things that they tell me is that, you know, it's, it's those folks that make it big in Hollywood is because they've, they've been around for a while or not Hollywood, but in, in the music industry yeah. um, is because either they have a one hit wonder that people like really like right off the bat and they're able to, you know, crank it out and make some money yeah. or they just, they, they, they're just at it all the time with the same stuff. Um, and then eventually someone notices them and goes, Oh, Hey, cool. You know? So, um, I know it's a long, a long winded answer, but, um, I just want to do comics, man. That's, that's what I want to do. So at the end of the day, just want to do comics. Isn't that the best answer you could possibly hear folks? <laughs> we just want to do comics just to entertain. Yeah. I completely understand that what you're saying, because when I created Codename Hunter, so far I've got two books out because yeah. I'm working on uh, finishing issue three and working on issue four with my anchor friend Enrique Lopez. And right now I'm just pushing issues one and two so people know what it is, know what it's right. about. So yeah, though, so that we get the excitement of reading the next issues because you really want to build your audience. Yeah, and, and not just that, Ian, but it's also um it's also super expensive. So, you know, if you, yeah, it's, it's pricey, you know, like some people have different hobbies. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine that I work with the other day and, um, you know, uh, we were talking my hobbies, right? So I, this isn't my only hobby, you know, I, I, I like to do other things, but, um, and he was like, well, you know, he's like, I, I play golf, right? So that's his hobby. That's his way of relaxing. Yeah. And he's, and he's like, oh, my whole golf set cost me $4,000. I'm like, holy crap, four grand. Yeah. I'm like, geez. But to make a comic for anybody that wants to make comics, yeah. um, you know, if you if you're paying someone seventy to eighty bucks a page, and you're doing a, you know, sixteen to twenty four page comic, you're looking at between the artist, 
doing the pencils and inks, yeah. then a colorist, then someone doing letters and someone doing the, the graphic design of the book, you're looking at three grand easily, easily. You know, I, I mean, if you want a bare bones minimum, two grand. So, you know, what people don't understand is a lot of people that I've, I've come into contact with in this past like year that I've been doing this and they're like, I want to make comics. And I'm like, cool. How much do you got? Oh, I don't have anything. I'm like, yeah, no, you, you got to have some kind of capital. Right. And then not only do you need that two to $3,000 and maybe not readily, readily available all at once, but you got to be able to, to, to manage that process of the money behind it. Cause I don't know, like I got bills. I got two girls that one of, one of my daughters just started college last year. My other one just graduated and guess who funded all that daddy did. So, you know, and I still got to, there's things I got to do still. Right. So yeah. I would say if it's disposable income that you could spend two to $3,000 on, that's, that's not even crowdfunding. Um, then go for it. I, I say great, great. If you have the money and you could do it, that's fantastic, but it's expensive. And then the printing, uh, um, you know, printing a comic. I mean, these are, this is 25 books. That's 25 books. And those, these 20, I, I got 50 for my backers, um, cost me $131 for uh, just printing and shipping. So you, if you do that a couple of times, you know, so, um, it's fun, Ian, it, and it's a, it's a labor of love really at the end of the day, unless you make it big. And, um, and then, you, you know, you got that capital to go, okay, cool. I got a $10,000 Kickstarter and it's still at the end of the day, it's going to cost a lot of money. So. Well, it's true. It, it, it's very true. that This is one of the hardships of uh, being in this industry, folks. Uh, you will really find people who actually do everything themselves, you know, that includes the writing, the penciling, the inking, the coloring. Okay. I, have, I have done that. I have done that. And that's why it takes a long time in between issues, yeah. especially, you know, if you're doing it by yourself. But if you're doing it with other people, yeah, it's going to cost you. So you really had to figure out a budget here, you know, to say, okay, I had to pay this person this much, I had to pay this person this much, and so on. So this is actually a real life lesson here. It's not just me saying it, it's another, you know, pro here. So Yeah. No, agreed. Agreed. It's it's uh but at the end of the day, you know, again, it's it's a hobby. So yeah. um, you know, eventually it becomes um can it become work? Yeah, that'd be great. You know, one of my friends, um he does Uh, hold on, folks. We're experiencing some technical difficulties. I don't know what happened, but uh, we'll get uh, Dan back uh, as soon as possible. So, so anyway, um, let's just take the heart to what he said so far. Ah, here's he here again. Sorry, man. Someone was calling my phone. I apologize. That's right. Uh, um, yeah, what I was going to say to you was that, uh, um, you know, some I have a friend that that actually does comics. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th that's his. That, that's his job. His name is Eric Nelson. Um, and he does a, a book named Primal. And that's all he does all day. He does comics all day long. Uh, and he, he makes, he does pretty good for himself, you know, and just, and, and, and I'm happy for him. It's great. Yeah. Um, and then I know some people like myself and like you who got, you know, we got full-time jobs, you know, and then we, we do this, you know, to make this, because, because we, I, we love it is basically why we do it. Yeah. So I, I've often told people because I actually am a freelancer. I do other people's projects, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I consider my own stuff uh, pretty much a hobby. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's okay, right? Because like you know, um, you know, growing up in in the eighties. Um, oh, hey, it's Eric. <laughs> hey, hey, Eric. Uh, <laughs> uh, growing up in the eighties and the nineties, when um, you know, when you made a comic such as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah, um, it was it was the market wasn't as saturated, right? Because social media didn't exist. Mm -hmm. until later later on and now that social media is a big thing and everyone's got a computer i mean look i'm on my phone right now talking to you so everyone has access to to photoshop to to some kind of word document to something printers are a dime a dozen um the market is more saturated yeah so you and i may create a book tomorrow and the guarantee isn't there that that it's going to go anywhere Right. You know, as, as long as, you know, hail Kevin Eastman. <laughs> yeah. Hail Kevin Eastman. Those guys got a loan from like an uncle or something. If I remember correctly, the uncle put up his house 
or as an inheritance or something. Yeah. And then, and they, you know, again, you know, it's a perfect example, but nowadays, you know, geez, everybody's doing a comic book, you know, it's like you go on Kickstarter or you go on, or, you know, one of these other crowdfundings and, and it's okay. And that's fine. It's, yeah, that's okay that that happens, you know, but yeah. it's just how much you want to put into your book, how much you're willing to sacrifice, to, you know, to make things happen. So, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's definitely worth it if you're passionate about it. This is something I've always said, and you're clearly passionate about it. Even though it's a hobby for you right now, you think it might lead to something much later on. So, when you have that drive, when you have that passion, go with it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you know, and eventually, um, my wife uh, is is uh, is a big is a big um, a big supporter of mine. Uh, and then my family, you know, they're big supporters of mine too. And my, my mom, when I did my book, she they reached out to me. She's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> it was like, it was the funniest thing in the world. I'm like, mom, relax. Like, I'm not going to be a millionaire tomorrow. Like, it's okay. It's okay. It's, take it easy. It's like, okay. it's not a big deal. Um, but like, eventually, uh, I'd like to retire from what I'm doing and invest in, I, I'd like to own a comic shop if I could one day. Right. So, um, you know, those are, I, I understand it's difficult to do something like that uh, because of the capital behind it. But yeah. how, how cool would it be if you could own a shop and run like, a, you know, have your own comics printed, you know? Be cool. Uh, I, I, I'd be in heaven. I'd be in heaven. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'd be great. You know, so, yeah. It's a, it, it's whatever you want to do. If, if As long as you're, you're passionate and you understand there's going to be a lot of late nights. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's the drive. You have to have that drive to do it, you know. It, it's totally worth it. It's totally worth it in the end, especially when you get the look of people actually buying your stuff. You know, really, yeah. you know, this is really cool. When's the next issue coming out? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I was in, um, I was in Tifton, Georgia, visiting uh, Kevin and uh, Hassel from um, someone else. I think you should you should be friends with because he's a great guy too. Okay. He's uh, he has a, a podcast called the Nerdy Man Room Show. He's had me on a couple times. Real great guy. You guys would get along because he's, he's right. just a terrific human being. Um, so I went to Tifton, Georgia to visit uh, to visit Kevin, and I printed up some books. And um, he's like, oh, Dan, come on. Come on up, man. And, and we'll do like a um, – it was like a Saturday. He was having like a Saturday show, uh, showing of all, all his, his comic store stuff. And I went up there. Me and my girl went up there, and, um, and I spent a buttload of money on the tickets and the printing and everything. Man, I didn't sell one book. <laughs> I didn't sell. I sold one. I'm lying. I sold one book. And, and th this is where my story comes into play. So I was down. I was, I was pretty depressed, right? Because I'm like, damn, man, like, it, this sucks. But it's fine. It's okay. It's part of doing business. I understand it. And then um, uh, there was this little girl that walked up to me when I was sitting there. And I was, I was all depressed. I was like, God darn it. You know, like, you know, whatever. You know, I'm sitting there. And she comes out of nowhere, walks up to where I'm at. And she's like, oh, you're Daniel Garcia. And I'm like, yeah, hi, how are you? And she's like, she gives me a $5 bill. And she goes, I'm here to buy a book from you. And I'm like, I was, I was so wanting to say, no, just take it, right? Like, don't <laughs> give me your money. Just, just take it. Like, I don't, I don't want, don't give me your money, right? Because she was so adorable. Yeah. And then my girl, my, my, my girl took a picture on the side for me. Um, Without me looking, she took a picture of me giving her the book and me signing it. Yeah. And she she left and she was all excited when she left. And when I got home, I, I was going through the pictures that she sent me and, and I found the picture of me and this little girl and that stuck with me. I was like, okay, this is why I do comics. Yes. This is why. I, yeah. I was like, this is why I do the books. This is why I, I don't care. Like it was just so worth it for me, you know, at that moment. Yeah. It was worth it. Uh, yeah. Real quick. I had a similar experience myself. I was at um, WinterCon. Um, it, it, it's a it's a small convention in New York. It's a sci-fi convention, and I was doing it like before the week of, the week before is Thanksgiving. And I thought, okay, this is gonna be good because it's packed. It was actually in a casino. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay, this is good. It's gonna be packed because it's you know casino and all that. I only sold one book myself, and maybe one poster. That was about it. And. Uh, it was completely, it, it was one of those experiences like, okay, uh, I can't work, I can't do this before, a weekend before a holiday. That's the first thing. 
And yeah. yeah, it was it was mind boggling that you know that nobody sold anything. I was just said nobody sold it. But I get this one customer that's that buys my book and buys uh, the poster, buys something of Eric's, you know, of Solar Racer. And so cool. I, okay, I reached somebody in this convention. Do you do better the next time? It's always a learning experience. Yeah, agreed. And and I think it's again, it's it's so much trial and error. Yeah. And that goes back to my story with with, with Kevin, where he's like, you know, you just gotta print number one and just go to as many shows as you can. Yeah. You know, and just and just show it over and over and do it over till you till you're tired of doing it. Um, and then, you know, eventually either, you know, like you and I were talking about this the other day, um, you know, and just for your for your listeners, your folks that that watch your podcast, yeah. Eric and I, uh, um, Eric, Ian, and myself, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, some people do really well, and, and they're sitting right down at the table next to you. And sometimes they don't, you know. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. But 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 as you and I have talked about, I know Eric and I have kind of had short conversations also. But like you and I have said. Um, but do you, I, I know that like, for example, um, and again, talking Christopher Els, Elston is someone yeah. else that, um, I mentioned to you that I have talked to before, yeah. Yeah. um, who's done some Kickstarter. He's had some success as well. Sure. Um, like what do you, so do you go out on a limb? I'll give you an example. Here's what I'm getting at. Okay. Bad girl books, for example, right? So let's just say bad girls. So yeah. like what what draws in the Kickstarter or the crowdfunding crowds is let's bad girl books. Let, 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 let's face it, it's 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 just a part of life. I I, I can't explain it. There's yeah, no I, formula behind it. No, it does sell. It does sell. It it's just it's just a it's it's a it's almost a guaranteed sell as long as the art is good, but it's bubblegum for your brain because really not that not that cyber ronin is like the deepest weed in the world right like you're not going to read it and be like oh this guy deserves a pulitzer like not like that's not the case but you know there's there's a little more meat to the bone on, in a book where you know and I, i've seen your guys stuff by the way your triple threat stuff is amazing which is why i contacted you guys to begin with yeah um but like so what what does well is it is it chicks and bikinis with machine guns i don't know maybe i mean that's it seems to do pretty well so like so do you sell out, right? I'm using air quotes here. Do you sell out and do something like that just to flip a dollar and then fund what you need to get funded? Is that okay? Or, I mean. Oh, that, that, that's a very tough one. I don't do it myself. Eric doesn't do it himself uh, because we just stick to our own stuff. We just, we just do comics that we think are cool. That's the first thing. And because we're pretty much trying to be the audience in that sense, you know, would I do uh, pinups like that? Maybe, but if they were just my characters, that's about it. But do these type of things sell? Yeah, they do sell. They do sell, mm -hmm. and that's because you know it's it's geared to a very specific audience. That's understandable. But personally, uh, as much as is appealing to you know to have these type of you know, you know stories, it's always good to have tough female characters. I always advocate yeah. that because Agreed. You know, I never liked the damsel in distress. Never liked no. that. Because it's so outdated, first of all. And that's not what people respond to. That's not what young women respond to. So was, so in creating one of my characters, Mayas and Anders, I said I wanted to be pretty much his equal in every sense. You know, yeah. I wanted to be tough. I wanted to be smart. You know I wanted to also have a bit of a ruthlessness and a vulnerability just to show that this woman is human and right. relatable. Relatable. I think that's really important. I, I, I'm not a fan of the damsel in distress either. Uh, even in my relationship, my personal relationship, if my girl can't kick my ass, like I don't want anything to do with it. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I need to have someone that's as headstrong as I am and that's willing to back me up um, <laughs> and, and, and is there. Like I know that's going to, that's, that's there with me. Um, um, that's as tough as I'm not. I'm not a macho guy, but someone that's there with me, uh, you know, at all times. That and my in my writing, um, I don't have any damsels in distress either. I, I think that's it's a total turnoff for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but like showcasing 
if you're able, here's how I think you can pull it off. And you and I talked about this other day also when I shared with you my script yeah. uh, or my synopsis. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can pull off a femme fatale or a bad girl book, especially if you're able to make it where um, the character is, is more three-dimensional and is, there's more to her than just, you know, a, a bikini or something, right? Or just something appealing to, to the crowds, but yeah. that you make it more appealing uh, where they are more, they have their flaws and they have their, their strengths. And then you build on that. Um, where was I once? I was at a show and, and someone came up to me and was like, oh, um, how, do you, how, do you write, um, how do you write a protagonist and give them like dimension? Right. And I'm like, man, I, I don't want to give you the wrong answer. I'm going to give you my answer <laughs> and what I've read. Mm. I'm like, you interject the problem. Yeah. And yeah, he's right. Sorry. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm going to tell you what Eric's reading. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought he's right. <laughs> um, you interject a problem and then how the person reacts to the problem, whether it's a female or a male, builds on their personality. So, so if you they jump out of a plane and their parachute doesn't open, and their their, their thought process is "crap, I'm gonna die," and they do nothing about it, then there's your character's personality, right? Yeah. V- versus my parachute doesn't open. Now I got to figure out a way to get it to open, and I'm not afraid because I've done this a dozen times. You're building on that personality. If they run into a, a an abandoned dog in an alleyway, or someone kicks an abandoned dog what's your what's your first reaction is it what the hell are you doing to that dog or is it that's none of my because my business and you walk away yeah so you're kind of you know what i mean like so you're, you're you're kind of building on that person and you're, you're adding that dimensional uh you're adding that dimension to them and you're giving them that character even if it's that one small thing you're showing the audience of how that female is going to behave in in, in their book yeah and it's the exact opposite with the antagonist because I feel with the antagonist, it should be they're the hero in their story. You know, they think of themselves as the hero in their story, even though they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, you have mentioned that to me before, and I, I thought that was a really interesting way of looking at it. Um, you know, going back to the turtles, right? So, like, when I read when I read the turtles as a kid, and I was like, oh, this shredder guy is like. That's a badass. Like I'd be afraid of confronting someone like that, right? That's scary, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that the antagonist needs to be, if not more, more of an interesting character than the protagonist is. And they need to have their own fuel for wanting to do what they're doing. Yeah. So whether it's selfish or whether it's revenge or whether it's um, you know, wh- whatever the plot may be, but you're right. I think that that to every good protagonist, they need to have that antagonist um and i think it's okay to for me a lot of the times when i'm writing i i i dig back into my memories as a kid and i'll, I'll put someone into my book that i may have grown i may have grown up with or or someone who i may have saw, seen as a bully when i was a kid and then i put them into my book and then but i i had a lot of my personal touches to it right yeah. I grew up in a different time, right? So, like, in, when I grew up, it was jumping ramps and skateboarding and surfing, and you were out in the street getting beat up or mugged or whatever it was. You know what I mean? It was a different time for me than it is than things are now. Video games really, I think we had Atari or ColecoVision when I was a kid. So, like, computers were a thing of, like, you know. So, for me, it was, like, that that gruff growing up. And so... I, and I, a lot of that shows in my writing because I, I want people to, 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 to see like what I'm thinking and I'm feeling or how I felt in the past. So that's how I write. Yeah. I, I also had a lot of uh, my personality in there and also some, you know, real stuff that happened to me, you know, some of my stories. So yeah, I don't understand well because it makes it relatable. It makes it more relatable. Yeah. Like, you know, so to me, I don't know. And I, I was going to ask you and Eric this question and maybe you guys can answer this. Sure. Who was who was relatable to you as a kid, um, or when you were reading comics when you were younger, or now it doesn't matter. But but who were some of the people that you related to when you read, when you picked up a book, when you picked up a comic? Who was relatable to you, and why? Okay, uh, I can answer this. Um, 
I had two issue two characters, which was Batman and Superman. I'll tell you why. Uh, they were both loners, you know, um, very isolated, and a lot of times very shy because I was a very shy kid, you know, growing up. So I was able to relate to that, you know, the loneliness and all that. The and of course, eventually, obviously, I uh, broke out my shyness and had these many friends. But yeah, I was able to relate to that and also just to see, you know, what you could be, you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, for, so for me, it was um, Batman, Spawn, and the Crow. Yeah. See, the Crow is awesome, right? And the Crow had like relatable right batman and the crow especially for me relatable because like um they despise injustice right yeah. and it kind of ties in with what i even do for work now where um i put bad people away in jail i'm not a i'm not a peacekeeper i'm not a i'm not a certified police officer but i work i work with law enforcement and part of my job is to find the bad guys and get enough evidence to put them away so that's part of my job now um, in, in what I do as a career. And I went to school for that and everything. I got my criminal justice degree. Um, but for me growing up, Batman was relatable too. Yeah. So just like, just like it was to, to you guys, to you and Eric, um, and there's something about that when, you're, when you pick up those books and you're like, oh, this guy's all about justice. And he's all, he wears a mask. He kicks everyone's ass, which is awesome, right? <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't put up with any shit. <laughs> that's great. Um, and then it was Wolverine. I was a big Wolverine fan too. Love the big loan, the big loner. Yeah, the loner who was like, you know, um, he he was like, was it was like the first kind of antihero, kind of like a Batman antihero, where he was like, hey, I'm not doing this for the popularity. I'm just doing it because it's my job, basically. Yeah. Um, but and then as I got older, like you, um, and I can't, came out of my shell more. I was like, oh, Superman's really cool. Like this. It's all about like the American way and like justice and like, yeah. you know, more so. So, um, so I think that you, in my writing, I, I try to, um, to really push that. So, yeah. Well, that, that works great. Uh, so this is issue one of uh, Cyber Ronin. And um, obviously it's going to be a bit before issue two comes out. But do you have any? It's being worked on. It, it's being worked on. It's being worked on now. Um, uh, my coup is on. Yeah, yeah. My coup's on page six right now of number two. Uh -huh. uh, he's been he's been a sport. He's been fantastic because him and I have been working on it for a while. Um, and again, like just making sure that everything is done and that there's enough funds for everything. So he's been he's been really good about waiting to get this thing done. But um, there's some there's some pages done in number two. So I'm hoping number two mid-year i'm hoping at some point you know so yeah that folks you heard it first it's issue two is on the way it's in progress so just hold on a little bit longer so uh, what, are, <laughs> what are the projects are you working on right now so my idea ian was um um to invest some and to invest my capital into into different ideas so yeah. um and kind of do the shotgun approach and kind of work on different projects at the same time. Um, and I brought in some, a lot of talented folks to help me out. Uh, Roberto Art, if you guys aren't a fan of his on Facebook, check him out. First name Roberto, common spelling, last name literally Art. <laughs> That's what he's under. Um, and the, the Saul Shavanas of the world, the colorist, and the, the Diana Noriega illustrations, another great colorist. Um, and then the guy that did my cover, uh, was Mike Koo, who did one of the covers, but the other guy was Ariel Medell, uh -huh. who actually just did Street Fighter uh, Ninja Turtles. Ooh. So so check out Ariel's stuff. Yeah, he's he's also great. Um, uh, Dana Black is another guy that has been, him and I have had some correspondence back and forth. Um, so a lot of great folks that I've reached out to help me out. If, I, if I'm forgetting you, it's not intentional. It's just, you know, a lot to go through. But um, there have been other stuff. There's other stuff in the work. Eduardo Garcia illustrations, another guy that him and I are actually working on some stuff now. Oh. Um, but there's been a couple different books that I've been, I've had some pages done already, a oh. lot, a lot of pinups done already, and it's just everything's behind the scenes, kind of, it's kind of marinating, just waiting till you know, till I can start getting some stuff shipped yeah. before I get into other other projects and actually kickstarting them or crowdfunding them. Oh. Um, the 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 
the stuff I have the most advanced pages on right now is Atomic Vamp. Yeah. Um, and the gentleman I told you about, Hassel, from the Nerdy Man Room show, him and I have had a lot of late nights going over the script on that. Uh, but Atomic Vamp is on page 23. And Di uh, Diana Noriega is actually the one that was doing the colors. Um, that's, that's good and ready. Um, Rock Wraith was another one that, that we started doing some pages on also. Um, and then all background stuff right now, as I mentioned. And then I brought in a buddy of mine named Jamar. Um, and Jamar and I have actually, we, we've been collaborating on this story. And I know you and I talked about this the other day. Um, and I got a, some fantastic pinups done. Um, and I'll kind of keep it a little bit of a secret. I'm going to, I'm going to release some stuff probably towards the end of the week, um, by a gentleman named Mariano, yeah. uh, who's done some pinups for me and, um, Eduardo Garcia is supposed to do the illustration for us. And the title is, and this goes back to what we were saying earlier about the, um, the femme fatale and the bad girl books, Yeah. but I, I called it the, fa uh, fast girls. Right. Uh -huh. And, you know, like when I was growing up, my dad was like, oh, don't mess around with any fast girls or girls that are faster than you. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I like my cars fast and my girls faster kind of thing. You know, my dad would say to me because he, he, my, my dad's an old Marine. So he would say shit like that to me. Um, but I called it fast. I called it the fast girls and fast. It stood for the, the military acronym that I came up with uh -huh. was final final assault strike team. Wow. But then in the book. Um, I'll have one of the girls on one of the covers spray painting out the final. Mm -hmm. It'll say female action strike team. So, um, and then it'll be like kind of like the GI Joe, my version of GI Joe, um, and like the real 80s, um, you know, being an 80s kid growing up with the Schwarzeneggers and the Dolph Lundgrens of the world and the Rambos and the Commandos. Yeah. Um, I, I still watch that stuff. I drive my girl crazy. She actually watches it with me, but, <laughs> um, so I wanted to make it, um, I wanted to make it fun, bubble gum for your brain, just fun, exciting. Got a lot of great pinups, a lot of great, um, a lot of great, uh, pinups done some wallpaper stuff done from some fantastic artists. And I'll be showcasing that stuff. I did it its own pages. I have our own page for that right now. Yeah. Uh, but, Little by little, I'm getting all the stuff. It'll breach to the surface eventually. Once my stuff ships and I get everything into the backer's hands, uh -huh. Ian, it's it's all hands on deck, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a really busy summer. And as I mentioned to you and even Eric, I'd like to bring Eric in on this, do some pinups for me. Um, and to bring you in as a writer, I think it'd be awesome to collaborate with you on, on this stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Um... Yeah, uh, Eric and I would uh, definitely love to collaborate with you on this. I would have to ask Eric about if he's watching, which I'm, I'm guessing he's watching because he's so uh, commenting on it. Eric, uh, do you think yeah. you yeah. for uh, Daniel? Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, I love Eric has been great, man. Him and I have never actually spoken in person. We, we've had some correspondence back and forth via text and uh, on, on uh, yeah, social media. But he seems like a great guy. So you partnered yourself oh. up with a fantastic person. So it's oh. great. He is a great friend. He's a yeah. uh, great friend from my uh, school of art days. And I can't imagine anyone else uh, covering this company with and just creating okay. these uh, books that we're very proud of. And we're going to be showing them uh, more issues very soon because he's had hard work at, I forget what number issue he's on, but he's hard to work on that. Awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's good to surround yourself with great people. Um, Jamar, I'll, I'll give him a plug also. Um, uh, Jamar is a buddy of mine that, um, he contacted me like a month or two ago and was like, Hey, I'd like to, you know, collaborate with you on some stuff. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's great. You know, he seems like a great guy, very passionate also. Um, and, um, anyone that I can surround myself with that's passionate and that has a good attitude is really important to me. Even yeah. when I look for an artist and you may feel the same way that I do, when I find myself someone that I can work with, if they're kind of like, um, God, what's the word I want to use? Like unenthusiastic. Mm -hmm. I want nothing to do with them. That's my personal preference. I don't care how cheap or expensive you are. If you're not enthusiastic about what you're doing, uh, thank you, Eric. <laughs> if I find someone that's not as enthusiastic as I am and, and I message you, hey, man, you got time for a quick pinup and you don't respond or your response is yes or it isn't anything more than just yes, and then I, I don't want anything to do with you. I mean, I, 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 need, I need enthusiasm around me. Yeah, yeah, you do because 
you want to work with the the best people that you know that you you know you, that you want to collaborate with and i have to say you're so far you've been fortunate enough to work with the, those type of people so, so am i i've been fortunate enough to work with those type of people so yeah the reason why probably any of our stories are any good is because we surround ourselves with this kind of many you know i agree yeah so yeah 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 i, I i'll get um you know um hassle my buddy hassle from the nerdy <laughs> man room show and kevin and even jamar and sometimes you and me will I don't know. It's like nine o'clock at night on like a Sunday, and we're all messaging each other. We're messaging each other, yeah. you know, and um, it's just a bitch. It doesn't bother me. You know, it's cool. It's it's neat to see. Like when you and I were talking about the cyber running story, you were like, "Hey, man, like, what are we doing?" And I'm like, "I'm like, shit, dude. I, I gotta get, I gotta get this done." You know, and you and I. But let me tell you, like, that's that's the right attitude to have, though, Ian. I think you have to have that attitude. You gotta be able to like get up in the morning and go, "All right, man, let me get my my day going." Yeah, but I you know you 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 have to be that that intensity has to be there all the time in my opinion. Yeah, it is. It it does, especially yeah, you want to be hungry for it because this is a project that you would want to collaborate on. You know, it, it's always nerve wracking when you're getting scripts. You know, that you don't know what it's going to be like, and then when you get the script, you read, you're like, it's a sigh of relief because it's good, and you're like, this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hassel actually sent me a script on um on a couple of books that he's working on, and um he's like, "Can you read this for me?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So it took me some time to read it, you know, and I, I went through it real well. I wanted to give him the attention that that it deserved, and when I got back to him, he's like, "Oh, you like it?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's great." I'm like, "You got to find an artist now," you know, <laughs> but but it was it was a sigh of relief because you're like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, folks, that's pretty much kind of spoils it's on to is just the passion, the drive, and also surrounding yourself with people that, you know, can help you creatively and just, or just support support you. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Derek says something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, man. Me too. Me too. And, and you did some great work, Eric. Thank you so much. And that's not that's not going away. Uh, you know, we're we'll 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 get to it. We'll get to it um hopefully it sometime this year. Um uh, you know, Ian and I will probably spend some time figuring out and Jamar and I will probably figure out like what's next, right? So what are we doing? Yeah. But to me, it's important that the backers get their stuff first. To me, that's most important. And then once they have their stuff, then it's free game, man. It's, it's, then we'll decide on what we're doing. But he did some fantastic, all the stuff he did so far was great. So Eric, thank you for your help. Yeah, he's a great, great dude, great dude. <laughs> It's all about patience. <laughs> it's like a relationship. You got to be really patient. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So I think we'll end on this note, folks. Um, always make sure that the customers come first, you know, because they're waiting for stuff, you know, that you promised them. And you need to make sure that you deliver every time because they they'll want to come back if they like your stuff. They'll want to come back. Yeah. So keep that in mind, and also make sure that you always try to be positive in this business. I know that's very hard to do because there will be some times where you know you'll have you won't have you know be feeling confident or somebody saying, "Oh, it's not good enough." keep those voices at bay at all times because mm. you let those demons in they're gonna control and own you so don't yeah. do that yeah, always agree. The passion the drive that's it you know and, and my last piece of advice is um is try to pay your stuff forward also um whether it's helping someone else out or whether it's um even if it's just a like or a a forward of someone's stuff onto your page or it's just being positive with people right and really being that guy who's like the forefront for positivity i mean i don't know however you want to call it but and there's a lot of people that'll say like when i put cyber Ronin out the first image ever some people were like oh that's stupid it's a rabbit with and i'm like yeah okay cool we're like have a nice day you know <laughs> or it was like oh it looks like the rabbit from star wars i'm like sure dude that sounds fantastic all right cool have yourself a nice day like that doesn't bother me it doesn't phase me like so it's like uh 
uh, the haters, I guess, from, not not to sound juvenile, but the haters that are out there. It's like you're not doing it because of whatever reasons you may have. I'm going to continue to do it, and I'm going to continue to hopefully be successful. So well, and that's it, brother. Well said. Well said. Off. Ah. <laughs> same here, Eric. Absolutely, brother. Yeah, same here. Oh man. Oh, he's got he's got one more on. Yeah, see right, yeah. There, right there, right there. Off. Oh. They told and uh, and uh, and even Disney. I think Walt Disney went to visit uh, the, the Warner Brothers people, and he, he was bringing his his Mickey Mouse idea over, or no, vice versa. Sorry, it was Bugs Bunny was being brought over to Disney. Yeah. I don't know if you guys heard the story, but uh, the Warner Brothers guys, the whatever I Warner Brother, whatever his name was, he brought uh, his Bugs Bunny idea to Disney, and Disney actually stood him up. And then uh, and he went and made his own thing. So, hey, you know, man, it's uh, it, yeah. it, it, it's tough to please some people. But you know what? Yeah. That gives you the chance to say, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. Please yourself, man. Yep. Take care of yourself first. Absolutely. Well, that's going to be it for us here on our episode tonight. Daniel, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. I uh, can't wait to see what's going to happen next with uh, uh, Cyber Ronin and these other projects. going to be awesome. Can't wait to collaborate with you. I can't wait either. Looking forward to it. It's good to see you face to face. Absolutely. This is the first time we're actually meeting for the first time. <laughs> Except to your. <laughs> All right, you guys. Eric, it's good to talk to you too, brother. Be well. All right. Ian, I'm sure we'll be in touch during the week, Ian. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. I'm Ian Miller, and this has been Triple Threat Comics YouTube channel. Good night, folks. See you. Also, be sure to actually follow us on our social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you'd like to follow us on YouTube, just hit that like button and subscribe.